Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to start out by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Kakadash. Yahweh being the Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in Hada Sham name, Yahweh Shai being the Most Begotten Son, meaning He delivers, He saves, or Kakadash, Holy Spirit. Double honors unto the apostles and elders, the great Muslim that rule well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and a Baba Ball. All right, all praises to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, man. The Wadi Yahweh Shai, you know, for giving us the Holy Spirit to continue to do this work. But I want to get into it through the Spirit because, you know, I heard the apostles talking about it this past uh, camp that they had. You know, <clears throat> basically going into being a fear monger. And indeed, we are fear mongers. Okay, because Yahweh Bahasham Shai ought to be feared, man, greatly. Yahweh Bashem El Shai ought to be feared greatly, man, because he is very terrible. All right. This is uh, Sirach Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 43, starting at verse 29. The Lord is terrible and very great and marvelous is his power, man. Okay. The Lord is terrible and very great and marvelous is his power, man. Okay, so why would you not fear him, man? All right, there is no one who have hardened themselves against the Lord and have prospered, man. That goes to show you the most high he's in control. The Lord controls everything. That is a power, that's a force to be reckoned with. Job 9 and 4, he is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who have hardened himself against him and hath prospered, man. That's right, man. Okay, no one can prevail against Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, man. No one can prevail against the will of the Most High, man. And the Most High ought to be feared. Okay? Because He controls your every step, your every move, your every thought. Everything that you do is already written. Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is in control. And no one can prevail against Him. No one can stay His hand or say unto Him, What doest thou? Let me get that precept. And it's funny because I didn't even have that, these precepts that I'm bringing out written. And that goes to show you that the Most High is in control. <laughs> okay. Daniel 4 and 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? That's right, man. So you can't stay the Most High's hand. You can't stop the Most High from anything, man. All right. The Lord is the one in control. The Lord said, I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. I, the Lord, do all these things. Or a matter of fact, no, that's a different scripture. Let's get this real quick. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no power with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. That's right, man. You can't escape the hand of the Most High, whether alive or dead. You know, Eliezer said that in the book of 2 Maccabees, man. So the Lord ought to be feared. The Lord ought to be reverenced. The Lord ought to be the one to receive all the glory and the praise. Let's get another one. I'm going to show you that the Lord is omnipotent. He's almighty. Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So the Lord is in control of good and evil. Okay? That should make you fear, man. That should make you fear. You know? The Lord is the one controlling good and evil. Hey, shit, even the demons are afraid before Yahweh Bashmel Shai, man. So yes, we are fear mongers. Yes, we do sell fear. Fear is the beginning of wisdom, as the scriptures say. James 2 and 19, thou believest that there is one power, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So the demons tremble before the presence of Yahweh Bashemashai. The spiritual demon Satan is, is bowing down to the Heavenly Father, man. All the high level demons, all the low level demons, they all fear the Heavenly Father, man. All the angels on the right hand side and on the left, they all fear the Heavenly Father, man, and His only begotten Son. 2nd Ezra 8, starting at verse 21. Let me start actually at verse uh, 20. 
Second Ezra 8 and 20. Oh Lord, thou that dwellest in everlastingness. The Most High is, he's eternal. Okay? He's known as the Ancient of Days. Before day, the days were even existence, the Most High already existed, man. Just, just to further emphasize the point. Okay? And there's actually a scripture that says that before the day was, I am he. Roughly paraphrasing. That's why he's known as the Ancient of Days. Get that precept. I think it might be in Ezekiel or somewhere in the prophets. Mm. Oh, Isaiah. Isaiah 43 and 13. It says, Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work and who shall let it? That's right, man. Okay. I will work and who shall let it? Meaning, the Lord said, look, I'm going to do what, what my pleasure is. I'm going to fulfill all my counsel. And who's going to give me the authority to do so? Who's going to stop me, pretty much? And the Most High has the right to say that. But for us in the flesh, we don't have the right to say that because the Most High is in control. Strong Ecclesiastes 5. And verse 2, follow not thine own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart and say not, who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. That's right, man. So us in the flesh, we can't say that. But the Most High, he can. That's why he's known as the high and lofty one. The Most High has the right to be proud. Okay? You know, because he is the high and lofty one. He's the Most High. There is none higher than him. Okay? Okay? But yet the Most High is still balanced because he still looks upon all of our, all our affairs, you know. Let me get a precept to back that up. Psalms 8. And uh, I start at verse 1. To the chief musician upon Giddethith, a psalm of David, or Giddethith, a psalm of David. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. All right. And that's going into how, you know, you have basically those who came up as babes in this truth. Okay. To confound, you know, those who think they are on a level. Verse three, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. You see? Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Ultimately, beginning with our Lord, Yahweh Shai. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the seas, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, man. That's right. So as high and lofty the most high is, yet he still humbles himself, if you will, for lack of better words, to behold our ways, man. Whereas grasshoppers to the most high, man, yet he still takes care of us in this low estate, man. The Wadi Abash Mashai. And that is another reason why the Lord ought to be feared, man. Okay. This is uh, Habakkuk or Habakkuk 3 and 2. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech, and I was afraid. Okay? Yeah. We're supposed to tremble at the Lord's words, as the scriptures say. Ye was tremble at my word. We're supposed to tremble at these words, man, because these are the words of the Heavenly Father. You should be afraid. All right? Habakkuk 3 and 2. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech, and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath. Remember mercy, man. And that's what we're hoping for. That the Lord, you know, cut this place off, revive us, okay, which he's doing it now through the spirit. All right, and then we're hoping for the, the uh, mercy and the day of the Lord's wrath, man, when he comes to destroy this place, man. Okay. This is uh, Hebrews 11 and 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of the Most High of things not seen as yet, Moved with fear. Okay? Noah moved with fear, man. 
Why? Because he understood the terribleness of the Heavenly Father, man, and he got to see it firsthand during the flood. You got to think about it. The Lord killed every person on earth besides eight souls. Noah, his wife, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, and their wives. Okay? Those are the only souls he left alive besides the animals. You had seven of the clean and two of the unclean. Okay? So that goes to show you what, man? The Lord ought to be feared. The Lord is terrible in his high places, man. I'm going to read that again. Hebrews 11 and 7, it says, By faith, Noah, being warned of the Most High, of things not as yet, not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith, man. That's right. Okay? That's right, man. Yahweh Bashmashai ought to be feared, man. Okay? This is Exodus 20 and verse 18. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not the Most High speak with us, lest we die. You see? So Jake was popping smoke at the Most High. Oh, you know, Moses, we'll talk to the Most High. You know, we don't need you. We'll talk to the Lord ourselves, right? So the Lord was like, okay, bet. Tell them to sanctify themselves. Come down at your wives. You know, I'm going to meet you on the third day. So when the Lord's glory came down, <clears throat> so like you're talking to Israel, they heard the lightning and the thunder, and they were afraid. Okay? Just like how Moses, when he seen the Lord's anger, he was afraid, man. Rightfully so. Because the Lord ought to be feared. Okay? Shit, lightning is a, is, lightning is a scary thing, man. Hearing a loud-ass thunder, that could make somebody quake with fear, man. Especially when it's up close and personal. You know? And that's what goes off when the Most High speaks. You see? So, hey, man. Lord ain't no joke, man. Matter of fact, let me get a precept to back that up. All right, uh, John 12 and 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. And the people, it says, the people thereof that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. <laughs> okay, you see? So, that goes to show you when the Lord talks, man, you're going to hear that lightning. You're going to hear that thunder, man. Okay? And it's going to be a scary sight. All right? Exodus 20 and uh, 18, and all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. When the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear, but let not the Most High speak with us lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for Yahweh Bashmashah has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. That's right. So if we fear the Lord truly, okay, we won't need, you know, it'll be less chance of us going off. This is uh, Sirach Ecclesiastes 1 and uh, 
21, it says, The fear of the Lord driveth away sins, and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. That's right, man. So if you fear the Lord, you know, truly, then you're not going to sin. Okay? Now, of course, we go off. You know, we're in the flesh. You know? But when you truly fear the Lord, man, you diminish your sins, man. Got another precept backing up how Moses was afraid of the glory of the Lord. Okay? This is uh, Deuteronomy 9 and 18. And I fell down before the Lord as at the first 40 days and 40 nights. I did neither eat bread nor drink water because of all your sins which he sinned in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure wherewith the Lord was wroth against you to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also, man. You see? You see? So, going to show you the Lord's anger ain't no joke. The Most High ought to be feared. And guess what? Yahweh Basham is angry with the wicked every day, like it says in the book of Psalms. So, what type of anger do you think the Lord is getting ready to put upon this place, man? Hebrews 12. In 21, it says, And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake, man. All right? And you got to understand, Moses was a mighty man. But he said he exceedingly feared and quaked before the Most High, man. Because he ought to be feared. That's why the scripture is saying in 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Mashiach. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Right, so we know how terrible Yahweh Shemashai could be. That's how we persuade men. It says, but we are made manifest unto Yahweh Shemashai, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences, man. That's right. Lord willing, you know, we can get through, you know, to you, man. Okay, so that you could receive it. You know, somebody be saying, get it through your thick skull. You know? Ecclesiastes uh, 12 and 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh Basham al Shai and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For Yahweh Basham al Shai shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil, man. That's right. So we are fear mongers. That's the conclusion of the matter. We are to fear the Lord. We need to fear the Lord, man. It's a must. No if fans or buts about it. Joshua 24, starting at verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the side, on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. Okay? And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood. Or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay? And Lord willing, you know, we continue to stay in that type of spirit, man. Because the Lord ought to be feared. The Lord don't fuck around, man. Okay? Everybody think the Most High is a joke. Till he show you why he, why he ought to be feared, man. That's why in the book of Jeremiah, the Lord was like, what? Fear ye not me? Saith the Lord? You know? How, how, do you not tremble at his presence, man? That was a question. Okay, Jeremiah 5 and uh, verse 22. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it, man? So the Lord was like, look, I'm the one who set the ocean to, to not pass the bounds of the sand of the sea. And you got to think about it. That's not a, that's not a, that's not like a, a, a heavy barrier. You know, of course, sand and one mass together can be heavy, but I'm talking about like sand within itself. Really, it's like you could pick it apart easily. You know, those little multiple sand grain particles, but yet the Lord still has a setup where the mighty waters don't even pass that decree, man. Unless he allows it to come through and flood, but what happens eventually? The water recedes again, man. Going to show you how terrible the Lord is, man. Okay. Well, let's go back to that Exodus. Fear ye not me. 
the terrible power, man. Yahweh by some y'all will shine, man. Exodus 23, 27. I will send my fear before thee, and it will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come, and I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. That's right. That's right. That's right, man. The Lord don't play by his men. The Lord be with his men as a mighty, terrible one. Okay? Jeremiah 20, verse 11. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. The everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten, man. That's right. And we even seen that back with our forefathers, man. Genesis 35. In verse 5, it says, it says, uh, and they journeyed, and the terror of the Most High was upon the cities that were round about them, that they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. That's right, because Yahweh Bashemash was lifting up a standard for his men, as he does now in these times, man. You don't even know how many times the Lord really be lifting up a standard for us already on small scales, okay? Even down to, you know, when somebody uh, thinks an evil thought towards you, man, you know? And that's the Lord sending his fear before our enemies, man. And that's why the most high ought to be feared, because that same power could be turned against us if we're not living correctly, man. The Lord is not a respecter of persons. Okay? The great and terrible power, Yahweh Bashanel Shai, is not a respecter of persons, man. Okay? Uh, let me see. Let's see. Um... Go back to Jeremiah, right? I'm going to get this precept of the land back off of Jeremiah 5 and 22, where the Lord said, Fear ye not me. This is Jeremiah 10 and verse 7. Who would not fear thee, O king of nations? Let me start at verse uh, 6. Jeremiah 10 and 6. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee, O king of nations? For to thee doth it appertain... For as much as among all the wise of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is none like unto thee, man. That's right, man. Okay? There's no other power like our power, Yahweh Bashemash. We serve the true living power, man. The real God. All these other nations are given over to idols, man. Okay? And there is no power like our power, man. Who would not fear him, man? You know? We got another one to back that up. Revelation 15. In verse 4. Who shall not fear thee? Let me start at verse uh, th 3. Revelation 15 and 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of Yahweh. Let me just start from the top for uh, edification's sake. This is uh, Revelation 15, starting at verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous scene. It's like a seven angels having the seven last plagues for in them is filled of the wrath of the most high and those seven plagues is going into the completion of the lord's judgment which is going to be those nuclear missiles man along with the laser beams from the chairs you gotta imagine that the 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 heat and the fire that's getting ready to come man all right zechariah 14 and 12 says how people's flesh is going to consume while they stand upon their feet man people's eyes are going to melt out of the holes all right, people's tongues are going to be consumed in their mouth. You got to imagine how hot it's going to be where you're standing upon your feet and your skin is just melting right off, man. That's fucking heat right there, man. All right, and the Lord's getting ready to bring that upon the wicked. This is why he ought to be fearing. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And then they had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his karagma and over the number of his name. Stand on the sea of glass. Having the harps of Yahweh Bashmashah. That's right. And I, I said the word karagma because when you go into that word M A R K, all right, go, pursuing to the M A R K of the beast, uh, the word there is karagma in the Greek, which means a, a, a badge of servitude to the anti Messiah, man, which is what Esau is. Okay? And that badge of servitude is the RFID C H I P. It also means a stamp or a mark or an etching. I'm going to show you it's a physical, it's a physical M A R K, man. You know, even though I said it already, but hey, Lord willing, Lord, you know, they don't strike the video. Anyways, so the elect going to have victory over this devil and his system, man. 
and they're going to stand upon the sea of glass mingled with fire. That sea of glass mingled with fire represents the uh, firmament with the, the, the fire reaching up to the heavens, man. Okay? That fire is going to be burning up so high that it's going to reach up to the firmament, man. You understand how high that is of fire, bro. Verse 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of Yahweh Mashiach, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, O Lord, power, almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and, thy, and glorify thy name, for thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. That's right, man. That's right. So the Lord is terrible, man, and all the nations are going to come and serve before him. Okay? These heathen nations, they're going to learn the fear of the Lord. They're going to learn to be subject to our ways as a nation because we're going to break them up and, and put them laws on them. Just like how they broke us up, made us take heed to their ways and their customs. Well, the Lord's going to do that back to them. Revelation, the second chapter goes into that. Psalms, the second chapter. Okay. Beat them with a rod of iron, man. You know, bind their kings and nobles into fetters of iron and chains, man. Okay, to execute upon them the judgment that's written. Um, let's see. A hey, matter of fact, let's just stay in that spirit of talking about the day of the Lord, because that's the prophecy. Luke 21, starting at verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear so men are going to literally have grown men mighty men are going to literally have heart attacks because of fear men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and when shall they be shaken when the missiles hit the earth and it's going to cause a great earthquake man and then shall they see the son the son of man coming in the cloud talking about that fathership with power and great glory and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption drop not. So you got to understand how terrible the Lord is. The Lord said men's heart filling up for fear. Why? Because they're going to see a lot of terrible things. Like Leviathan. Leviathan so terrible that at his sight, one, a person just catch a heart attack and die just by looking at him. Job 41 and uh, verse 9. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? And guess what? The Most High created Leviathan. And the scriptures say, in the creation is proportionably seen the maker. Roughly paraphrasing the wisdom of Solomon tells you that. So he basically, you only seen a percentage of what the Most High is capable of just through Leviathan, man. I'm going to show you how terrible he is. That's why it says, verse uh, 10 None is so fierce that dare stir him up. So nobody's fierce enough to make Leviathan afraid. It says, who then is able to stand before me? Right. So the Lord, like, look, if nobody's able to make Leviathan afraid, then who can stand before me who created Leviathan? It says, who hath prevented me that I should repay him whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. That's right, man. So the Lord, like, look, I own everything, man. Nobody trying to uh, run me down, talk about I owe them anything, man. Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. The Lord does what he wants with his creation. Shit, and the Lord got another uh, 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 dinosaur beast with behemoth, man. Okay? But Leviathan is what you people will call Godzilla. That's where they got it from. They got Godzilla from the scriptures. Job 41, you know, goes into that, man. All right? Get another scripture back in the pile of Leviathan at his sight can make somebody cast down. Wisdom of Solomon 11. And uh, verse 18, or unknown wild beasts full of rage, newly created, breathing out either a fiery vapor or a filthy sense of scattered smoke or shooting horrible sparkles out of their eyes. So Leviathan is a fire breathing dragon that has a uh, uh, laser beam supervision, man. OK, yeah, I know it might sound like a fairy tale. I know it might sound far fetched, but this is written in the scriptures, man. Was not Solomon known to be the wisest king on the earth? So how the so why, why would he be writing about this if it was a fairy tale? It's real, okay? The Most High created this, man. And read that again. Wisdom of Solomon 11 and 18. Or unknown wild beasts full of rage, newly created, breathing out either a fiery vapor or a filthy sense of scattered smoke. 
are shooting horrible sparkles out of their eyes. You got to imagine this shit, man. A fire-breathing dragon that can shoot laser beams out of his eyes, man. You mean to tell me you won't be afraid of something like that, man? And guess what? The Most High created him, man. So how terrible is the Most High, man? Verse 19, whereof not only the harm might dispatch them at once, but also the terrible sight utterly destroy them, man. That's right, bro. That's right, bro. Okay. That's right, bro. God damn. Just the sight of Leviathan make you drop dead. Shit, the day of the Lord is going to be a terrible day. Wisdom of Solomon 5, son of verse uh, 2. When they see it, talk about when they see the elect get beamed up, they see the elect receive that deliverance. They shall be troubled with terrible fear, right? Because you're coming back with the angels, the so-called UFOs. All right. Uh, coming back with, you know, the missiles. Okay. These different wild beasts letting on the loose. But ultimately, they're going to be afraid when they see them chariots, man. It says, when they see you, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they look for, man. So they're going to be afraid. That's why the scripture says when Yahweh comes back, it says how, uh, you know, all kings of the earth shall wail because of him, man. Because the day of the Lord is going to be a terrible day. Joel 2. Does not scripture say the day of the Lord is darkness and not light? Okay. Uh, Joel 2 and 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it, man? That's right, man. Who can abide the day of Yahweh Bashmashah's wrath, man? Great and terrible day, man. Let's skip down to uh, Joel 2 and 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. That's right, man. So it's known as a great and terrible day. Judgment day ain't going to be no joke, man. Okay? No joke. You know? So, yes, we are fear mongers, man. All these precepts being brought out about how terrible Yahweh Bashamel Shai is. We are fear mongers, man. You ought to fear the Lord, man. Okay? The Lord ought to be feared. Is not he known as the king of terrors, man? Is not he known as the king of terrors, man? Job 18 and 14. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle and shall bring him to the king of terrors, man. Yahweh Bashmashai is the king of terrors, man. Okay? The Lord is terrible, man. So terrible, the demons fear him. So terrible, the demons fear him, man. You gotta really meditate on this. And like the brother Yatazak be saying through the spirit, the one who created fear, the most high is the one who created fear, man. Okay? <laughs> How terrible is he, man? And you know, there's a saying where a person was like, would you rather be fear or, or would you rather be loved? And he was like, I'd rather be feared than be loved because you can love somebody and still do them wrong. But when you fear somebody, man, you're going to show them that respect. And that's what it is with the Most High. He wants you to fear him, you know, and a fear is what obtains his love, man. If you fear the Lord, that's going to obtain his love. Psalms 47 and verse 2, for the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth, man. That's right, man. The Lord is terrible, man. He is a mighty king, great king over all the earth. All right. Psalm 66 and verse 3. It says, Say unto Yahweh Shemeshai, How terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. That's right, man. That's right, man. In the, in the greatness of his power, man. You know, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Once they start to see the Lord lift up that standard, man, people going people gonna to recognize the power in that day, man. Right now, they think shit's sweet. But they're going to see how terrible the Lord is, man. 
just the same power who flooded the heavens and earth, the same power who brought those plagues upon Pharaoh and all his household. Guess what? He's getting ready to show his mighty hand once again here in these last days, man. On a grand scale. Psalms 99 and verse 3. It says, let them praise that great and terrible name for it is holy, man. And his name is Yahweh, meaning he is, he exists, he to be, man. Okay. And his terrible name is worthy of praise every day. Shit. You got angels who praise the most high 24, 7, 365. They literally bow down and praise before the Lord every day, every second of the day. All right. So the Lord, he ought to be praised. Psalms 106 and 22. Wondrous works. Ooh. Ooh, spirit. This is uh, Psalms 106 and 21. They forgot the, the most high, their savior, which had done great things in Egypt. Wondrous works in the land of Ham and terrible things by the Red Sea. That's right, man. Let us always be mindful of how terrible the Lord was in that time, man. Because guess what? He's the same power he was back then. He is now. The Lord does not change. Malachi 3 and 6, man. Whew, man. Psalms 145, verse 6. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts. And I will declare thy greatness, man. That's right, man. All right. The Lord's might and his terrible acts will continually be declared. And this is why we are fear mongers. Because we understand the terror of the Lord, man. That's why we are trying to persuade people to repent. Does not the scripture say, warn them from me? The Lord said, warn them from him. Okay. So that goes to show you how terrible he is, man. Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Okay? From Yahweh Bashmel Shai. He's the one who's warning you. From himself. We're going to show you how terrible he is, man. He ought to be feared, man. All right? So with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, Basham Akakodash, double honors. To the apostles and elders, great most and ever well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all.